to another edition of Parks Rec and Roll. In today's show, we're on tour. First, we'll visit the historic Kingsley Schoolhouse at Little Bennett Regional Park. After that, we'll drop into Brookside Gardens, which has a vibrant adult education program. There, we'll go behind the scenes to learn about composting. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Craig Rice, Montgomery County Council Member. I represent District 2, which includes the upper region of Montgomery County, which includes parts of Germantown, Montgomery Village, Damascus, and Clarksburg. One of the gems of my district is Little Bennett Regional Park. It's a 3,700 acre park with a campground, golf course, and over 20 miles of trails. Now also on the property is a historic one-room schoolhouse, which is open for tours. Make sure you check it out. Welcome to Little Bennett Regional Park. We are at the Kingsley Schoolhouse. About 10 years ago, uh, the, there was a master plan done for the park and the Friends of Little Bennett formed and the park manager, Wendy Hanley, worked with the Friends of Little Bennett and the Clarksburg Historical Society. They said, there's a real opportunity here. And they scrubbed down the building. Um, people lent or donated some school desks and basically they put a few furnishings in there, painted the walls and they opened the building once a year um, in September for lessons from the past. But it was only open once a year and the school really had not been properly rehabilitated. In 2007 the Cultural Resources Stewardship Section, which is quite a mouthful of the Department of Parks, was formed and our purpose is to rehabilitate the many historic buildings that are in the park system and to open some of them as interpretive centers, as museums to the public. So this was, this is one of my favorites. Kingsley Schoolhouse was built in 1893 at this location and what's different about it today than when it was built is that today you find it in the middle of a park with lots of beautiful trees grown up around you. It's very tranquil here. But when it was built, it was in the middle of an area that was agricultural. So there were farms. And so it looked very different when children went to school here back in the 1890s and up through the 1920s. It wasn't a huge project. It's a one-room schoolhouse, so that makes it not too complicated. And our own uh, carpenters worked on it. They recreated the windows we had them make shutters. The school didn't originally have shutters, but um, this protects the building from vandalism. And I was given a budget to furnish the inside of the school because we only had a couple of school desks and so on. Um, so with this budget, which, which was really pretty minimal, I went on Craigslist and I found wonderful objects for the building and many of them were donated. Once the people realized that it was for a park system and was gonna be open to the public, they said, here, take it. We found a 1920s globe and so on and so forth. So the schoolhouse is interpreted to the 1920s. Make sure that everything is within the time period for this school. So for example, this is copyright 1929, 1932. We have oral histories from residents in Clarksburg. I was born in 1919. I went to school when I was seven, and I attended the school two years. My name is Kenneth Thurston King. I guess I was about five years old when I started this school. So it's really been a wonderful community collaboration to bring this schoolhouse back to life and hikers come back. It's about a three quarter of a mile walk. We have got a terrific docent inside, Ralph Buglass. People who attended this school remember marching in to the sounds of a march. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We have the Pledge of Allegiance written over here and we have our flag. The Pledge of Allegiance was a little different, so come on over here. I pledge allegiance to my flag. Yes, at that point when they said to my flag, they would point to the flag.
He has won actually a national and a state award for his work here at Kingsley Schoolhouse. A little later, as years went on and World War II came around, the country was fighting Germany and this looked very much like a Nazi salute, which is what they said in Germany. So at that point, the pledge was changed and you kept your hand on your heart the whole time. We are just so honored to have him as a dedicated uh, docent here. I'm dressed like the very first teacher who was a man. His name was Mr. Willis Rhodes. Mr. Rhodes might take out his ruler and just give a little rap on the knuckles. And that was enough to make sure that kids would obey the rules. All the other teachers were women and because they had to live nearby here too, they might be living with you guys, with your families. Can you think of anything good about it? Nothing good at all? No. Nope. Well, I remember Maud Ashton. She was my first teacher. Mm -hmm. And Elsie Green and Alice Boswell. She lived in, uh, Alice lived over in Brookville. And Mrs. Ashton uh, boarded at your house. She boarded at our house. What was it like having your teacher come <laughs> home to dinner? I thought it was good. So one of the great things about this museum, like many of the museums in the Washington area, is it's free. You would have brought your lunch in something like this a lunch pail. All kinds of stuff inside the schoolhouse um, for kids, young and old, to uh, look at, to touch. They could, people can sit at the desks, they can draw on the chalkboard. Many, many young kids have never seen a chalkboard because their schools have whiteboards in them. You get to ring the school bell. The school bell was donated and you can stay for five minutes or you can stay for an hour and a half. You can go play in the beautiful creek. We have outdoor games that you can play with. You can go to our park website and you can arrange for a special tour for your, your scout group, your camp, your school group. Uh, a lot of homeschoolers come here because they can actually relate very well to the schoolhouse because you had children you know, for a wide range of children studying together, which is not unlike homeschoolers. You guys see a drinking fountain? No. Nope. Here's the drinking fountain, because we didn't have any running water in here. The tour was really good. Like Mr. Rhodes explained to me about the house and how was it, how it was in the olden days. The oldest kid in the morning would go down to the creek probably with this bucket and fill it up. And I learned about, I learned really so much about Kingsley Schoolhouse. We like to welcome folks all year round. Bye. Bye. And we hope you'll come and visit us. For more details, go to montgomeryparks.org. Composting is nature's way of recycling. It's especially important at a large-scale public garden such as Brookside, located in Silver Spring. Montgomery County is, is really uh, an envir environmentally friendly place and we're really trying every day to, to make this a better place for our kids and our grandchildren in the future. And composting is one way of getting rid of unnecessary trash to go through the, the normal uh, system and actually to put it to good use. Now let's go behind the scenes to see how Brookside composts. My name is uh, Umberto Zeidler. I'm here at Brookside Garden, one of the, the greenhouse grower plant production facility. And one of my duties is also managing the compost systems at Brookside Garden, where we basically compost uh, most of the materials produced at the gardens and, and process them and then reuse them here. Um, and I'm about to, to give a little tour behind the scenes to a group of uh, uh, you know, visitors that they want to you know, learn more of our operations uh, behind the scene. Basically, uh, we, we sort of segregate certain materials. The materials that we actually are able to process at Brookside Gardens are mostly small material herbaceous plus woody material that are not more than uh, an inch thick in terms of branches. 
Uh, everything else that is too big for us to handle is either chipping the chipper, we have a wood chipper over there. The, uh, the rest of the material we cannot process, it goes into this bin, you can see over here, which are root balls and really heavy duty stuff that you know we don't have the equipment to process. So that material will go to another facility, which is up in Pope Farm, which is another facility up county. The rest of the stuff, which will be like 80% of the material we produce inside the, the, the our facility, Brookside Gardens, we process here. So basically, we get to a point where that bin is filled. When, once it's filled, then we are going to basically mix it up. So to have a good composting recipe, you had to have proportions of ingredients, just like you're cooking, you know, you, you need a, a recipe. You have the brown stuff and you have the green stuff. So the brown stuff you consider to be basically your carbohydrates, you know, energy source. Which means, you know, leaves, dry leaves, uh, branches, uh, twigs, uh, anything that is kind of you know, basically kind of woody and brown. Um, the green stuff will be mostly your clippings, young, fresh stuff stuff that comes from the greenhouses. Uh, that will be your proteins, then nitrogen. So you have carbon and nitrogen. The proteins are carbohydrate. And that's what the bacteria needs to, to process. So they use those food groups and basically they start to break down the organic matter. By using energy and protein, they, they build themselves, they, they multiply and they increase in number and the more numbers you have, they, they greater the proportion of number of bacteria the faster your breakdown of organic matter is. So um, right now, these piles are running hot because there's a lot of green material in there. And not because the heat, outside heat, it had to do internal heat. Um, and they're running around 150 degrees right now. So it's a little bit too hot. We wanted to bring it down to 130, 120, 130. The thermometer may be reaching the temperature you want, but you are developing a certain type of smell that is unpleasant, like, like methane, and that's becoming basically anaerobic, which being too much water. So with the thermometer on the aid of your nose, <laughs> you can tell that you have to do something about the pile. And the management will be either aerated, and allow more air to come in, or you may have to change your recipe and you may have to add a little more brown material. Would this be true composting at home? Yes, it's the, the same principle applies. The, the thing is that the volume and the size is different and the equipment you have is different. Uh, but it basically you have to have a, a, a mix that is balanced. If it's too dry, that also impedes the composting because the bacteria need moisture, need water to operate, you know, to carry their life cycle. This machine, what it does, is that basically scoop the material, and once the material is in the bucket, what it does is with those uh, rollers and teeth, actually grinds up some of the material and also help to uh, mix, uh, mix the material up and also add oxygen in the process. Then the same bucket you, is used to actually build the, the piles, the, the windrow piles. So it's a multiple use bucket that is very useful for small operations like our, uh, you know, ours, and also it has uh, a lot of power in it by being a, you know, hydraulic uh, pumps, uh, actually very effective. Uh, and it works really well for us. Once the, the compost gets to the point where it's mostly broken down to where we want, we, we have one more step, which we'll do here once a year in the fall, which is actually sifting it. Yeah. The end product, which is a finished compost, we actually store in a different bin, and it's actually there for staff use to amend the soils in, in the different garden areas, and we use it to basically improve the soils. Uh, and also sometimes use it as a top dressing for the grass. But our volunteers and people who work with us in the, in the garden, they are also uh, you know, free to take some of that material as their payback for their labors. So it's a good reason to volunteer. So it's a good reason for volunteer at Brookside, because you get a little free compost of a good quality too. So That's why they call it black gold. <laughs> to learn more about Brookside Gardens and its programs, go to brooksidegardens.org. So that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching this edition of Parks Rec and Roll.
Welcome to another edition of Parks Rec and Roll. This time, two clubs, fencing and comedy. Stay tuned. Our first story today takes us to Parkland Middle School in Rockville, where the Montgomery County Department of Recreation offers fencing classes and a club. On guard! I was looking through the Montgomery County brochure to sign my kids up for different activities, and then I saw that they had fencing. And I had to call the coach because it said starting at age nine, but I didn't know just how long it went. So I had to ask him if there were any older people in the class. And he just said, sure, come along. And, and I am the oldest person in the class, but they beat me in stamina, so it works out just fine. I've been doing it since I was eight, so almost seven years. I started, my dad was looking for a camp, and um, we saw a fencing camp, and my mom was all excited because she'd seen fencing when she was little. And she's like, why don't you try it? So um, I showed up, and um, I liked it a lot and just kept coming, and then I took the classes um, when the camp ends at the end of summer. Just, I liked it. Okay, about uh, 1998 or 99, they were looking for someone uh, to offer fencing. And my wife was Olympic fencer, 1974 gold medalist. So they asked us to come to the department and talk. And he says, that's it, we have to have you. They got us to sign the contract right there for three years and we started and it still is going on, it's 19, it's almost 18 years now. Uh, my youngest daughter used to do help me out. When my wife is having problem, knee problem, she's really bad shape, she can really do a lot, so I do most of this stuff myself. Here, because you just hit my chest. Oh! That for my right. What we do with a three, call them three weapon. Uh, I translate it very easy for the kids because summer I have uh, six years old and older, and I tell them there is three game of fencing. Uh, and uh, the three uh, weapon that we call them are foil, a saber and epee. Of course, they have different equipment and also the target area are different on an opponent. Now, what we do here is a foil fencing. And, uh, and most of the country, when you are start fencing, they start with foil fencing. Aha, uh -huh. good. All right, now put, put the foil on the foil. One day, my mother was looking for sports after I uh, quit soccer. And the sport we found most interesting, in our opinion, was fencing. And we started it, we just automatically loved it, we loved the sword play, and it was just overall fun. The coach, he is very descriptive, he is uh, fast-paced, he is uh, he's very funny, um, direct, yes. Nicely. All right, fence is ready. Go ahead, fence. Let's go. But in the end, we always learn and have a good time. Hit the plate on attack. Oh! That for my right off target. Just well, my mom was suggesting sports to me, yeah. and then she said fencing. I was like, I'll do that. Sword fighting, that's really cool. Uh, and then I found that? out it's my favorite sport. I like doing it. And shake hand. Good job. Okay, you guys. Very good. Great. All right, thank you. It's just a mask. Um, this is the glove, and this is the foil. Yeah. Uh, and then this is the jacket, and then my finger has the, the knickers, the pants. Uh, you have 40 feet length, piste we call it, or the mat that do, by 6.25 width. And usually it's a bit high, it's not like flat on the field. You go to the clubs, they are flat, but if you go to competition, it's a bit higher. Now, the coaches, uh, you have the scoring machine on the wall. But there's a big machine in the back, and um, both, um, both of the fencers are hooked up. So you put the cord in so it's coming out here and you plug it into your foil. This is just a, um, it's just a practice foil. But the electric um, foils, they have a little knob here, you stick in the cord. So you're pretty much all hooked up and the cord runs back all the way to the, um, the box, and which is hooked up to the machine. So. Red, green and white. 
If you hit the opponent on target, uh, on your side is red, red goes on the light. You have a point. Uh, the opponent's side goes green. You go off target, is white, the white goes on. Off target. Now, every of one of those weapon that we were talking about, foil, saber, and epee, has different target area. Equipments are different to a little bit, but the target area absolutely different. Foil is just a torso, front and back waist, front and back torso, head, head, hands, legs, off target. You have to hit with the tip of the plate, and every time you hit, you get one point. Now, if you're doing for 15 points, you go for 15 points. Now, when you do competition for 15 points, every uh, five points or so, they give you two, three minutes break. So you can, you know. But when we do here with the, with the beginner one, we do five points, 10 points. You know, with these guys, we do 12 points. Depends how many people are in here. Of course, we have a judge who, you have to have a judge. If, especially, it doesn't matter. If we, even we do electric, you have to have a judge. The, the electric uh, scoring machine buzzes up. Buzz. You stop it and we explain. Hold! Left, miss, right, to share. Nice. Challenge is not just physically. Uh, fencing is mentally also. I always give an example of chess player. If you are a good chess player, you could be a good fencer. Because every time you are uh, going to make a move, you have to think about the opponent who's in front of me also knows this technique. So he or she knows how to take care of uh, himself or herself. Now I have to think way ahead of what I'm doing. That's the only one I can score a point. If I don't, I just use this technique and I stay there, whoever is in front of me is gonna beat me. Shit, one zero, go all the way. It's, it's a workout, but it's got a lot of fair play and it's a very elegant sport. I like all of it. To learn more about the Department of Recreation Fencing Program, please go to montgomerycountymd.gov slash rec. Classes are held winter, spring, and fall. During the summer, there's a fencing camp for kids, too. And when we come back, laughing matters. How to make babies. Yes, as a little girl, you change the Y to I and add ES. <laughs> Online registration is about to get easier at the county's recreation department and Montgomery Parks. Starting with fall registration, customers can find facilities and register for classes using one convenient system and one account. The new registration system, called Active Montgomery, will allow customers to use one website, one username, and one account to register for classes and programs as well as view facility availability for reservations. Current and new customers will need to create a new account to reserve facilities and register for classes. Building a new account should only take a few minutes and will allow you to register and pay online for classes and facilities through one login. Signing up on the new Active Montgomery site is fast, secure, and easy. For more information, visit the Active Montgomery website. Do you need a laugh? At Leisure World in Silver Spring, comedy fans meet every Tuesday afternoon at the Comedy and Humor Club. Fun, friendship, and yes, the occasional bomb keep spirits lifted. I heard a joke about the Liberty Bell this morning. It cracked me up. You see that sign that says it's the best medicine? Laughter is the best medicine I'll tell my doctor that. <laughs> and it actually, they found out that uh, laughter causes certain uh, enzymes to, that are good for you. <laughs> there are two things that I need to tell you. Uh, is good news and bad news. Bad news, dear. He says, well, okay, um, since I don't have too much time, just tell me the good news, okay? She says, okay. The airbag works. <laughs> Sydney Katz, our, who represents Leisure World on the uh, Montgomery County Council. And I thank you for letting me be here. We welcome you. We welcome thank you. Thank you. 
Now, I've always said that politics is a cheap form of entertainment, but you all have made it a very nice one today. He said, if you'd like to tell a couple jokes, well, I actually got intimidated. Their jokes were so good that I figured, I don't know that I really have a joke that I think is going to win, win over this group. When you're down and not feeling too good, and you come in and have a laugh, and all those little things start working around in your head, and you begin to realize that it's not so bad. It could be worse. You tell little one-liners, like the robber goes into the store, he says, stick them down. The guy says, I thought it'd stick them up. He says, no wonder I'm not making any money. <laughs> Woman sits down on the bench where a man is sitting there, and she says, uh, you new here? He said, uh, no, I uh, was here before, but I just got back. She says, where were you? He says, in prison. She says, what were you in prison for? He says, uh, killing my wife. She says, oh, so you're single? <laughs> I'm an entertainer, I was a vocalist. Oh, you must have been a beautiful baby. You had to be a wonderful child. And I've been in entertainment my whole life and I was just drawn to it. Is it something I should keep or disown? Well, imagine their surprise when you opened up your eyes. The doctor said, now don't you frown. He really is a beautiful baby. But you're looking at him upside down. <laughs> Anyone that wants to come, either just to listen or to uh, tell a story, they're welcome. An 82-year-old man went to the doctor to get his own physical. She's 98. A few days later, the doctor saw Morris walking down the street with a, with a gorgeous young woman on his arm. A couple of days later, the doctor spoke to Morris and said, You're really doing great, aren't you? Morris replied, Just doing what you said, Doc. Get a hot mama and be cheerful. The doctor said, I didn't say that. I said, you've got a heart murmur, be careful. Well, we're, we're friends because we have this bond of making people laugh. There's no, um, there's no jealousy. There's, everybody cheers for everybody else. Even if you've heard the joke 10 times, and we tell a lot of jokes that everybody's heard. I told this joke, I think it was last week. I've told it here before more than once. You learn how to act. <laughs> In my pride. <laughs> You know, oh yeah, that was funny. Oh God, I heard it. <laughs> I will always call you sweetheart, cause I can't recall your name. We had some people who got pretty raunchy. After a while she says, you know what, Sam? My breasts are still hot for you. And he said, I have no doubt. One's in the cereal and one's in the coffee. <laughs> afraid when somebody gets up. People would say, I'm not coming back here again because of what you said. If you knew how to cook, we could get rid of the cook. So she said to him, if you knew how to make love, we could get rid of the chauffeur. <laughs> but then they come back week after week. Well, we think they're funny, so we'll come back anyway. This is a uh, photography shop. We can shoot your wife and frame your mother-in-law if you want. If we can, we can hang them too. Where else can you go for five dollars a year and have so much fun? I have a little kid who comes home from school and mother says, uh, what did you learn in school today? And the little girl says, how to make babies. Her mother is taken aback. She says, how to make babies? Yes, says a little girl. You change the Y to I and add ES. <laughs> Happy days are here again. The skies above are And I want to tell you about, in all those 20 years, I can't tell you that I would have as much enjoyment with anything else than this. Doubt it now. Let's tell the world about it now. Happy days are here again. All of us. <laughs> the comedy club has been going strong for 30 years. Membership is five dollars, and you don't have to be a Leisure World resident to attend. Just call for an entrance pass.
So that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching this edition of Parks, Rec, and Roll.